So I spent absolutely ages sitting down and filming this really long-winded intro and then I watched it back and I was like, this is boring, nobody needs this. So all you need to know is, um, in June I travelled to Disneyland Paris with my best friend Izzy. We went by Eurostar and we stayed in Disney Sequoia Lodge Hotel. And basically the aim of this video was to try and capture a little bit of what it's like to travel with accessibility requirements and a power chair and also manage on a dining plan when you've got multiple allergies and you're allergic to everything. So uh, we vlogged a little bit and then we sit down and answer some questions from Instagram at the end and we had like a general chat about it all. But yeah, that saved us all 10 minutes, so let's get on with it. <laughs> trouble with sometimes when I'm traveling about is finding non-dairy milk for my tea so needs must I've got my oat milk stored here in a handy little pouch <laughs> today we made a very exciting discovery and that is that Eureka slash Eureka however you say it free from um, dessert place do delivery on Uber Eats so we're currently in the Premier Inn and we have takeaway free from ice cream which is the most exciting thing ever is it here by the way <laughs> This is like, this is on a par with going to Disneyland for me, I'm not even joking. <laughs> exact set up like this uh, but then the beautiful thing is we just opened this door here and we've got all of this room as well <laughs> and we're far too excited about it because the very best thing of all besides the accessibility is the bunk beds <laughs> far too excited about this but it's very nice and spacious had no problem getting in with the power chair got a really nice accessible bathroom actually we've got a shower seat um, lots of room to turn about and we were just saying this would be absolutely ideal if you were travelling with a carer because you've got everything you need but then you can also use the door and have a bit of privacy if you want. Hey! 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 <laughs> See you later! <laughs> I'm so happy! What else can you see? I can see your heater, I can see you, I can see your bin. I can see oh. something behind, beside your bin. Oh, it's my slipper. Or you, you've got it. You've got it down there. I just look a mess. You do not look a mess. I do look a mess. Yeah. I just don't know how to start it. Okay, so we're back home now, and we have questions. Yes. No, you have questions, and we have answers. <laughs> that you was terrible. <laughs> no, it wasn't. See, this is what I mean. When I sit down and do it, I sound like I'm really bored and really like there's someone pointing a gun to my head. I can't do it. Like when I'm out and about, it's so much yeah. easier to sound like I have a personality. Oh. Pippa, <laughs> yes. How was the Eurostar? The Eurostar was pretty good, wasn't it? Oh god, yeah. We travelled by Eurostar. We booked the assistance in advance. Um, that was all fine. We just yeah. did it on the phone. We booked the wheelchair space. Yeah, the ramp as you get on the Eurostar, like it's not a really steep ramp straight up. It's like you go up a bit and then there's a level bit and then you go up a bit, which was really good. Yeah. Um, and as well, you know the fact that they got you on before like anyone else. You yeah. don't have loads of people staring at you. Yeah. It's just you and the ramp. Yeah, there's no one. Which is, it's a special connection. It was less hazardous than yeah. usual, my usual ramp situation. But yes, the Eurostar, it was fine. And then on the way back, we actually had a really nice experience mm. with the Eurostar, didn't we? They were yeah. really good. We'd had quite a 
an eventful day in Paris, but then by the time we got to the Eurostar, they really looked after us, didn't they? Mm. We got to go in the executive lounge. Lots of free food. Lots of free drinks. The problem was that there was lots of peanuts. Lots of peanuts, yes. Nuts but, everywhere, uh, rife yeah. with the peanuts, which is a bit of a problem when they cause death in yeah. certain individuals. And it was a shame because it meant I couldn't eat anything, but it was yeah. still like, it was a nice, and this is important as well, it was a nice, quiet, relaxed environment as we were waiting mm. for our Eurostar. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. Like, if that's an option, it might be worth speaking to a member of staff and seeing if they can sneak you in. Like, that's not what we did, we just got lucky, but it's yeah. worth asking, isn't it? You yeah. can request allergy-friendly meals. Um, so I... I mean, they obviously can't cater for all allergies and they can't guarantee, but I had a good dairy-free meal going out and coming back. Soya milk for tea, like, all stuff like that. So, yeah, Eurostar was good. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, be aware of the noise from kids and stressed families on the Eurostar. Yes. Oh, who so, would have thought it? I Children know, in right? Disneyland. How dare they? Uh, Bloody I, awful parents. <laughs> We talked about parenting enough over that trip. I know, we really did. I know. And the last thing we said about the Eurostar is that when you get into Disneyland Paris, you arrive in a really good central location. Like, you literally get off the train and you're virtually mm. in Disneyland. It's really close to the parks and the accommodation, so not a lot of, like, transfers to be messing around with if you've got limited energy, like, you've had a long day of travelling. It seems relatively yeah, fast like, free. There's also a shuttle bus, so if you have trouble walking but you're not a wheelchair user, yeah. there is, like, a bus that can take you closer to the... Um, to all of the hotels, I think. Oh no, two, two. there. Okay, the next Not. question somebody asked was, what was your accessible room like? And if I've edited this, oh, I think I'm... Excuse me. And if I've edited Sorry. this like I thought I was going to edit it, you'll have already seen a bit of the accessible room. That's really funny, you've not seen that yet, have you? <laughs> it's just me getting really excited over a bunk bed. <laughs> we yeah. had, like, individual rooms, basically. I know, we did, like... It you was... had a full, like, accessible bathroom, shower Yeah, shower seat. stall, which I was really pleased um... with. The doors were faffy, we wrote that down. The yes. doors were really heavy to get in and out of the room. So if you're trying to like manoeuvre a power chair and like try and open the door at the same time, it was like it was like doing a workout. Yeah. Oh. It was. If you've not got someone there to like open the door for you, it can be a bit of a challenge, I think. Yeah. To say we had an accessible room, right? I know there was like a there was like a fire escape that we got in and out of. Yeah. But if that wasn't there or if that was like inaccessible, you'd have to go. So we Just stayed to get um, back to your room. We stayed in Sequoia Lodge. I realised yeah. that we haven't said that. We had an accessible room in Sequoia Lodge, and luckily, like, there was a fire escape that we could like escape out of without alerting the building and like causing yeah. havoc. Um, so we had a quick way out. But if that quick way out wasn't there, like, the lifts aren't great in the building. To be honest, like, it would be a really faffy way to kind of get back up, get across, get to the main entrance, and get out again. So that's something to be mindful of. It's like not in fitting with the rest of Disney, is it? Like, no. It seemed like a bit <laughs> That dated. one lift. Oh, that one lift. I still <laughs> think about it a lot. So the accommodation, again, Sequoia Lodge. Obviously, Disney are very mindful of accessibility and they do try and make sure that... And we'd like hardly had any problems throughout our trip with like mm. a lack of drop curbs. Like, in terms of like drop curbs, it was great. Like, mostly level surfaces. But the theming in some of the hotels, so like ours was woodland themed, and it does make the pavement a bit bumpy. It looks great, yeah. but it's a bit impractical when you're using a power chair, because we're just like going along like, Ugh. You should laugh. <laughs> you should laugh. <laughs> Watching people go, Ugh. Especially when you've but, had a big meal and a drink, and you just yeah. have to get back like, Ugh. like when we're going back from the fireworks, and yeah. it's like midnight, and you're shattered, and you're yeah. there like, Ugh. Just basically around the park, there are also some impractical bits. Again, yeah. where they've tried to make the theming really good, and it's great in that sense. It's really immersive. The Ratatouille but... place in um, Hollywood Studios. Yeah. Not Hollywood Studios. In uh, Disney Studios. Yes. It looks very Parisian, but it's like cobbly. It's like no different to being in York. <laughs> yeah, so and it like... Vibrate mode. We joke about it, but it is like if you have pain or like like discomfort or you have things that dislocate, it's something to be really mindful of. And I think there are things you can do to adapt your wheelchair, but like it's something to be aware of. Like take it easy. Don't tackle it at speed like I did. Because it doesn't always end well. Oh, fly. <laughs> It was great having two rooms because we yes. did have a bit of privacy and like um, that when I go for like my little um, rest in the afternoon, which we'll come to, like we could have privacy. So like I could mm. just shut the door and go and rest and it wouldn't disturb you from doing anything. It wouldn't disturb nope. me if you were doing whatever you were doing. That was like a pleasant surprise, wasn't yeah. it? It wasn't something we were banking on, so no. we were just very grateful that we got that. <laughs> we, were, we were really confused when they gave us our room numbers. And it was two rooms. Yeah. yeah two we're different like, numbers. <gasps> two different keys. And yeah. like, <gasps> we've got a whole nother room. Space. And it had a free 
fridge as well. But it was great yeah. because you could, if you had medication that needed to be kept cool, you could store it in there. Or in my case, you could store your milk in there. <laughs> Important things. Important things. Take your own tea bags and your own coffee because they're not in the room and they're very, very expensive to buy. So take your own. They um, also don't provide kettles. Yes, you need to ask for a kettle, which was the first thing we did when we got there. Obviously. Because priorities. Yeah. The next thing somebody asked is, um, can you borrow wheelchairs or scooters in the park? We looked into, you can't rent power chairs, I know that, but I think you can rent transit wheelchairs and mobility scooters. And we saw people going around with like rented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we did. We saw people with rented wheelchairs. It was mostly like the, um, like rented wheelchairs for children. Yeah, that like the I buggies. Saw. Yeah. yeah. They... I mean, I can't talk about other people's driving abilities because if you've seen me drive a power chair, you'll know that I'm in no position to take the moral high ground here. But seriously, the number of people that just walk straight into the path of my moving power chair, like, oh my God, I'm not usually a violent person, but... This happened last time we went to Disneyland Paris as well. Yeah. I don't know if it's the theme park it's theme park mentality. Yeah. But people just do not give a <laughs> They have a place Sorry. to go. Sorry, and, I'll be Okay. Because <laughs> last time we went, like, we were in the manual one. Yeah. I'm aggressive, but it, it, it got to the point where people would just walk in front of you and they just wouldn't move. So it was like, you know what? We're going to have to do the same. They just like look at you and they just wouldn't move. Like, it's like, yeah, exactly. Like it got to a like, point like, where do you think we're going to go? You would make eye contact with the person who was coming straight at you. Yeah. And it was like a game of chicken. It was like, who is going to duck out first? And like, I was quite into it. I was like, I'm not going to move. But then if I hadn't moved, I would have got like clobbered. But that's not Disney's fault. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the Disney's general fault. public's fault. That's human society. Um, but then I think, you know, like once you've been in a theme park all day and you've been queuing for hours. It's understandable. And there's just, you know, you lose that sense of, yeah. like, right decency. Yeah. <laughs> just proceed with caution. Yeah. Or go the complete other way and just ram everyone yeah. down. Get one of those, like, snow plough things and yes. catch it to and the like front and just bat them off. Yeah. You need to do what you got to do to get to the front of Thunder yeah. Mountain. <laughs> then this one, this kind of leads on to that. This was the question that got asked. I'm going to say this like I get loads of questions, like I'm so popular. Like I hashtag I got influencer. three times instead of just Yeah, once. this yeah. one I got a fair few times. And by a fair few times, I mean three times. <laughs> People said, and it's a very valid question, how did you manage your energy and pace yourself whilst doing all that you wanted to do? Like manage your excitement while still managing your energy levels and pacing and looking after yourself. And I think that's a really good question. So I think it's a case of like being sensible but also cutting yourself some slack. So we basically, we would go out in the morning, we wouldn't get up at the crack of dawn, would no. we? We weren't like, because we had a few, we were there for five days, so it's not like we were trying to jam everything into two days. We had a slightly extended stay, there was no pressure on us to get everything done in a certain day. We were relatively flexible. Yeah. We were quite good at like being like, okay, we were going to do this, but let's yeah, do this. We've got a bit of a routine established. Yeah. So. I would say don't force yourself to jump out of bed first thing in the morning, rush out, do this, 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 boom, 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 and then by midday you're like, oh my god, I'm done. Like, because I've been there and it's not nice and you need to make sure if you're going for more than one day that you're pacing yourself to sustain that activity throughout all of your days rather than going mad one day and then spending the whole of the next day in bed and like booming and busting. Um, no, but it works, I think, uh, yeah. or the way that you do it. Yeah, and it took a lot of years to get there, don't get me wrong, mm. it was a lot of trial and error, but what we were doing is basically we were like getting up, getting ready, heading out, doing a bit, um, and then we'd usually come back kind of like at some point in the day, usually early or late afternoon, and then that would be the time where I have some downtime, I go and have a rest. The other advantage to travelling with Izzy is that when it's time to go again, she will get me up, she will do my makeup and my hair and make me look like a presentable human being. I just remember, I was thinking about, completely unrelated to this, I was thinking about the other day. There was a time, there was one of the days, and we were sat on the floor and you were trying to do my makeup, and I don't know what we were laughing at, but every time you touched my face with the makeup brush, I just started laughing. <laughs> and you were like trying to do my eyes, and I was like crying in the makeup. <laughs> just like, we weren't getting anywhere, we were just sat on the floor like cackling like, I don't yeah. know what we were laughing at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get so, yourself a makeup artist. Get yourself a makeup artist, but failing that, um, <laughs> you're on holiday, there's no pressure to look a certain way, who says yeah. you have to do your hair or your makeup, it's all about doing like things that make you happy, taking care of yourself. You know when your like, good times and your bad times are, so you can tailor your day around um, like knowing that you're less good at this time so if you do some stuff that you that you want to do at a good time then you can come back and have a little rest and then you can go out again or you don't have to go out again you could just chill i suppose take home point would be like have a think in advance about what's going to work for you and like don't feel pressure to go out and do all the things like 
Um, Because at the end of the day, you're going to enjoy your holiday much more if you're taking it at your own pace and looking after yourself rather than thinking, I must do this, I must do this, and having that pressure on you. Like, yeah. I also had a lot of questions about the little green access card, and it's here. Oh. So this, if you haven't seen it before, this is, um, I think it's actually called an access card, and um, you can get these if you have like... Um, a disability or a long-term health condition and it basically means well it's got many benefits but you can basically go to the front of queues for lines to take away the wait time and then for things like the parades and the fireworks you can go in like a special area a special viewing area you can access the pool at quieter times although we didn't do that no. there are pros and cons to actually using it in practice and i think the best way to address that is i will link a blog post that i wrote the last time we went and it's called disney made me question my disability <laughs> So I'll leave that down below. Oh, yeah. hashtag proper YouTuber. I know, right? I'll leave it down below. Oh my below. god. Link You've down made below. It. I've made You'll it. You'll be verified soon. Like, comment, subscribe. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I brought it back. <laughs> Sorry, there we go. <laughs> Don't hit a disabled person. I've got my access card. <laughs> but yeah, so access card. There are very stringent guidelines which you need to meet. Um, and that's obviously good because it stops people misusing the system. Mm. Um, but you need to word it in a very specific way and the wording on the website doesn't lend itself very well to chronic illness. Basically, you can apply for one of these either before you go, when you get there, or in the park itself. Anything else about the access card? Uh, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Like we did. We lost it. <laughs> we. I lost it. You lost it. <laughs> but they were very kind and they gave you another one. They with did. like no fuss at all. So I mentioned earlier that the access card, you get um, access to a special area for things like the parades and the fireworks. Um, as you call it, the disabled pen. <laughs> Basically, we went to see... <laughs> <laughs> no, but the disabled viewing area sounds worse. It does, Cause it, cause it sounds like you're going to like, oh, look at them. Yes. The story I was going to tell is that we were really lucky with the fireworks. They started at 11 and we went in the little accessible disabled area and it was relatively empty. We yeah. had this amazing view in front of us. There was barely anyone around us, just kind of level with us. We were there from 10pm. At 10.59... One minute no before the before the fireworks started, yeah. a lone straight white male. <laughs> I can't say that. And parked his body directly in front of us, regardless of all the space anywhere. He could have stood anywhere, and instead he walked and he stood directly in front of my line of vision. Yeah, obscuring everything. And I don't think we were very discreet about it. We both kind Not of went at all. Oh, what are you what doing? Doing? <laughs> And he wasn't English. He didn't speak English. No. But the woman next to us kind of like. Maybe Spanish, yeah, and the woman next to us was what I imagine sort of said, the Spanish like, was for what are you mm, playing at? Yeah. And he didn't really move, did he? No, no, he didn't move. And so we had to like sort of bum shuffle. Yeah. I just like I mean it was obviously a bad thing, but it is quite a funny story. Yeah. Like at ten fifty nine after an hour away it was I was literally yeah. looked on my phone, it was ten fifty nine, he just came, stood directly in front and we were just like not having it. We saw two shows while we were there which were both really good. We saw yeah. Mickey and the Magician and we saw the um, special Marvel, Marvel one. And again, they had like a disabled holding area. Mm. And that was like, it was like the Hunger Games, wasn't it? Like, yeah. they were all waiting you know, to be the fair, the Mickey and the Magician was worse. Was worse. So I think the Marvel one was a lot better because yeah. we all went in first and it was very calm. It was yeah. There was lots of space in we the got waiting to, like, area. We got to get ourselves sorted before the masses came yeah. streaming in with like their little children, like yeah. elbowing Sheriffs. people, the little precious yeah. chairs. But um, Mickey and the Magician was just carnage. I don't even know how you'd describe it. It was like people were like, What's the word? What's the phrase? Chomping at the bit until they open these yeah. doors. You know, like Mario Kart, right? <laughs> when like you, 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 no, you press your button. Yeah, to, to, rev, to, up. to rev up. Yeah, that's what they were doing. That's a really good to metaphor. get in. Yeah, <laughs> that's when you need some red shells to like, really take the people out. <laughs> but the actual show was really good. Oh, I don't, I don't know how it was for you, sensory wise. Well, Mickey but... Magician wasn't bad at all in terms of like strobe lights and special effects. It wasn't too difficult. The Marvel one, on the other hand, was a bit flashy. Yeah. Yeah, the shows, um, there are special effects um, to be aware of, but they're not too debilitating, which is always a good thing, because the shows were incredible. Incredible mm. cast, incredible production. 10 out of 10. Yeah. So the food situation, um, I don't know what the best way to approach this is, to be honest. I mean, there will be a blog post um, about managing multiple allergies in Disney. I have a really funny clip that I filmed earlier of me trying to explain my allergies, so I'll put that in here. I have um, a Canadian allergy. Um, 
so basically, in a nutshell, I have a complex food situation, um, and I never expect people to be able to cater fully to that. I think they, they tried did the their best. best. Yeah, they tried their best for the most part. There were some but places it's where it's not. No, it's not quite there yet. It's not what no. I imagine it would be like in Florida. In all honesty, I had the for same meal for like five yeah. days, which again is fine. Like it's pretty much what I, I went into it expecting it, but it was basically the safest options to go for were because we were on the Disney meal plan, and again we've explained that in the blog post. Mm. So we were really lucky. We got a three course meal every day, cause which is is great if you don't have any food allergies, like, yeah. like I don't. But if you do. It's it can be a bit restrictive and then if you're paying all this money for it and they don't have that many choices it's a bit yeah. and while some places were like great and they had senior staff who came over and said yep we can do this 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 and this mm. that was great but then in other cases you'd get somewhere where they'd be like no no sorry no can't do this so i think it just depends on like all staff have good intentions i think it just depends on like the level of experience of the staff member that you're dealing with and like you need to be prepared to kind of negotiate a bit while like obviously being respectful because we're, we would, we're not the sort of people who would ever be rude to staff even if they were terrible we would never be rude to staff there was i mean there was <laughs> there was one occasion where i was very very close to that line and you weren't there and that was when i had to argue for my breakfast <laughs> <laughs> oh god i heard all about this <laughs> so basically in the hotel and again like we're only brushing over this because it's all in the blog post but basically they had some allergy friendly like little breakfast cakes um, which I had instead of like the breakfast that other people got um, so again I was having the same breakfast every day that's fine no problem but on one of like the third or fourth day they had a staff member who refused to acknowledge that these like special cakes <laughs> even existed or like if and I, I like asked if they had soya milk which I'd had every morning she was like no no we don't have soya milk here oh, oh laugh like as if it was so ridiculous yeah. and I was like it's in that cupboard like <laughs> just please just go and have a look it's in that cupboard and it talked she wasn't having any of it and it wasn't until another more experienced member of staff came um that sorted me right out I was literally having to argue yeah. for like the same thing that I'd had every single day and it's like, but then oh. like if you went there for like the first day yeah and like you didn't know that they had these things and you were being told like no 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 you'd just take the what word you do yeah be aware that the the free from breakfast options are actually really good again in the blog post plug 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 so we had um we had varying experiences with the food but the food that we did eat was all very nice wasn't yeah it? really yeah. good uh ratatouille restaurant bistro <sighs> chez remy <laughs> New Yorkshire accent. Bistro Chez Remy. Oui. Très bien. Où est la téléphone? Croissant! Where? <laughs> Escargot! <laughs> oh, you better call this out. Please book the Remy restaurant in advance and don't leave it until your holiday like we did. We tried every single day to get in there and it wasn't until one of the last days when we went at a really unpopular time about 3pm. We took pity, we really like hammed up the wheelchair like because we really we make ethically questionable decisions like that sometimes. Um, and they got us in and it was absolutely wonderful. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. Mm. And that was the most allergy friendly pl place um, of all. Maybe that's why it's so hard to get into. Yeah. So the last thing is um, the rides. And somebody asked, um, did you have any issues with the rides? And the answer is, yes. We had one issue. <laughs> with the Wait. Peter Pan ride. Oh. When they wouldn't let her on, because apparently this woman could not climb up a ladder. In case of an emergency, they required you to climb a seven rung ladder. And I, knowing my own body, knew that if it was an emergency, I was capable of that. But they Which would. You told him. Yeah, they wouldn't take I, my word. Yeah. Like, I am really mindful of the fact that he's doing his job. He's probably got really strict safeguarding like guidelines to stick to. Mm. Like, if anything would have happened, he would have technically been liable if he'd let me on him for some bizarre yeah. reason. I suddenly couldn't climb seven steps. I just don't understand what changed in within the two years I when don't. we last went. There could have been some sort of incident. To be fair. Yeah. What I thought was like, if you say you are physically capable of doing it, then surely you are liable for your own safety. Yeah, we should have like the autonomy to like make our own decisions. Yeah, yeah, you could yeah. say right if something happens, I am responsible for my safety. I acknowledge that I think I can do this. I would have signed a form. You know if what I mean? To. It, it's as simple as that. Because I just you know like you Peter can... Pan. <laughs> <laughs> I just really like Peter Pan. I was like, I love but, Peter Pan so yeah. much. Like, yeah. I just really like. I was really good about it actually because of all the rides, of all like the kiddie rides. That was the one that yeah. I loved the most. Um, the only kind of like borderline one, and this was a real shame because it's... Sorry, I had a shiver. <laughs> the only kind of borderline one that like is a shame because it's my favourite ride was Crush's Coaster in the Studios Park. Yeah. Um, you do have to walk and do stairs if you want to go on that ride and obviously I'm really fortunate in that I can do that. Um, but 
the walking and the stairs were fine, but then there was like some sort of incident while we were queuing, and I just like we must have been stood for like what 10 15 yeah. minutes, if not a bit more. That was way too much. I ended up sat on the floor, like, and again, like it can't be helped. I don't want it to sound like we're complaining mm. or like, no. I guess their mentality might be right if you can walk yeah. down the stairs across here and up the stairs again, then you can stand up in this, yeah, yeah, uh, queue. But it's a great ride, <laughs> yeah, fantastic ride, but just that one Blip. incident. Um, and apart from that, like, any issues for the rides? If what you were asking is in terms of, like, motion sickness, stuff like that, I'm really lucky. As long as I don't go on the massive ones, I'm okay. The ones to be wary of, for me, were actually, like, the um, simulator ones, so the Star Tours and um, Ratatouille really had a bad impact on me, which was really surprising. Um, so be wary if you're kind of sensitive to that kind of, like, stimuli, mm. just take care on those rides. I ended up closing my eyes for most of both of them, and that helps, it genuinely does, so if you're in doubt, just, like, close your eyes a bit and it takes a bit of pressure off your like poorly brain <laughs> remember that one more oh i've blocked that out <laughs> that was one of the most traumatic experiences of my life oh it's so funny i got coerced into going into a slightly bigger ride than i'm comfortable with and i will never make that mistake again <laughs> i looked over and she's there like and I like, I was properly taking precautions, like before we went on it, I counted how many times. It was a U-shaped ride, so you start in the middle and you go up and then you go back. It was back. The, the car from Toy Story. Yeah, yeah, in Toy Story Land. And I was like, right, even if I hate it, it only goes eight times and I can just count eight times and then it'll be over. <laughs> it went once and I was like, get me along, oh my god, I can't hang on seven more times. But what was your favourite ride? Mm. One well. from Disneyland and one from um, the studios. Studios. So, Disneyland, I'd have to say Hyperspace Mountain, because I like big rides. And then, you know, and then in the studios, like, like Tower of Terror, I love the rock and roller coaster from Aerosmith. I absolutely love, uh, Crush's Coaster yeah. is really good. Pippa hated this as well, but I liked, you know, the Toy Story, like, the soldier drop I thing? To be Because, you know, you were freaking out, and I'm there like, oh no, you can see our hotel! <laughs> To be fair, I was very frightened about that one as well, but like, and I mean, while I wouldn't go so far as to say I enjoyed it, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it, and I do appreciate that it was a nice view, yeah. but then you drop. <laughs> it's a small world as well, I think is a classic, and you've got to go on it. Manifesting is too much, it's too much, I can't. Oh. Traumatic, just um, like, the stuff of what I imagine yeah. hallucinations would be like. Yeah, good choices. I would yeah. say my favourite in the studios is Crush's Coaster and my favourite in Disneyland, any guesses? <laughs> is it is it it's, um, Thunder Mountain by any chance? It's Thunder Mountain. We must have gone on it like seven times. <laughs> Even our phone is sick of us talking, so maybe we should wrap this up. And like I mentioned this in my blog post, but like it's like it's not like an unfair advantage. Like I don't want people to see it as an unfair advantage because it's for people who aren't well and there's a reason that they have this so like in my case i don't have this because i'm gallivanting going off on rides all day every day it's because i need to go back and rest and if i had to queue for the times where you have to queue for those rides by the time i got to the front i probably wouldn't have been well enough to do the ride it's just something to be mindful of if, I, if by any chance anyone is still watching this and like they're saying oh yeah. but yeah um any final thoughts i don't really know how to finish this like, it's good. They're very good in some ways. There's still lots of room for improvement. Hopefully Disney yes. know this and it's going to get better and better, especially on the food allergy situation. Yeah. If anyone's still watching this, give yourself a pat on the back. Um, if you have any further questions, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't say give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> mm. Very 2007 of you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. <laughs> we need a hook to make people like, comment and subscribe. You are this, not saying like the really comments. Really, content. No. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I turn it off?